Welcome, friends. Jennifer Martin here. I have an urgent warning about the eclipse, something that I just discovered. So I want you to really hold on here and take this serious. <clears throat> this is very important for you to hear. Um, I just discovered this today as I was looking at some information um, regarding the eclipse and something that came up. So I want you guys to share this broadcast. Get your friends on here and let's discuss this because this is very, very important. So I'm going to open in prayer. Um, I'm probably not going to keep you longer than a few minutes, five or 10 minutes. Um, this is very urgent for this news to get out there. So let me open in prayer and just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal this in the way that he wants to reveal this. So Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit upon this broadcast. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you that you are very serious. You are obviously pointing to something that you want us to hear. And so, Lord, we are asking for you to give us ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church and to America right now. Lord, I know that there is a lot of words out there. There's a lot of prophecies out there. And God, I just thank you for clarity to bring what you are actually saying, not what people think you're saying and not what people hope you're saying, but what you're actually saying and um, I just feel like shaking right now. I feel like the trembling of the Lord right now. And um, so Holy Spirit, we love you. Come bring your fire. We are willing to yield. And we want, Lord, to just obey your voice and to not put words in your mouth that you are not saying. So I thank you that you are going to show us what you're actually saying right now to the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, this morning I began to feel the Holy Spirit uh, highlighting some information to me, and He led me on. Um, he led me on a journey to find this, and so, guys, I really want you to share this. This is very important. I'm going to give you the information in the first few minutes of this broadcast, so you can hold on for five minutes and let me give you this information because this literally has to do with what is coming what is coming to the church, what is coming to America, and God is making it very clear. And there is no way to change what I'm about to reveal to you right now. So I need you to share this. It is undeniable what is about to be revealed to you and what is about to be shared with you. So, and I want us to pray. We're going to end this broadcast with prayer, and I believe for the Holy Ghost to come and do something mighty. So. Here's what the Lord showed me. Now, many of you know that the eclipse that came in August of 2017 went from the northwest to the southeast over America. And then the eclipse path that is coming on April 8th of this year, 2024, will go from the west, the southwest to the northeast. It will make an X across America. We all know this information. Many people are saying it is judgment. Many people are saying it is not judgment. Well, I am here to bring clarity of what is actually being said from heaven. If you have not heard from heaven, I am going to give you clarity of what the Holy Spirit is actually saying and what it means for us over the next few months of what God showed me literally three to four month window of what he showed me coming down the road. So I want to say this. Many of you know the information about that the first eclipse passed over seven cities in America named Salem. Now, Salem means peace and was short for the name Jerusalem. So the people that founded those cities wanted as their Christian faith to name it after Jerusalem. So they named those cities Salem. So in 2017, the eclipse path passed over seven cities named Salem. God wanted to bring peace starting in 2017. We see that God did start an adventure, and adventure is probably not the right word, a, a mission for America in 2017. We all know what happened in 2017. I believe that God was trying to bring peace to America, that he had a mission and that he was trying to wake up his church to a place of prayer like never before. Now we see the events that unfolded from 2017 up until now. Okay, so now here we are again in a very important year, just like 2017 was an important year. There was a lot of shift and a lot of change. Well, here we are in 2024. The eclipse path of this year is going to pass over seven cities. Those seven cities all have the name Nineveh. 
Nineveh in the Bible, we understand, was a city God was calling to repent. We know that Jonah did not want to bring the word of repentance to Nineveh. Jonah wanted Nineveh to receive judgment. And in fact, he ran away from Nineveh. We all know the story. Got on a boat to sail away from Nineveh because he did not want to obey God and bringing the word of repentance to a city that did not deserve it. We know that God sent a well to Jonah to swallow Jonah and then spit him up on the beach towards Nineveh so that Jonah had to fulfill the mission of God in bringing repentance to Nineveh. So now we have an eclipse going over seven cities named Nineveh in America this year, April 8th, 2024. I'm not even to the the detail that I want to share with you. I just need to give you this information first, but you need to hold on until I give you what I'm about to share with you, okay? I will get it to you here in the next couple of minutes. So God was calling Jonah to call them to repentance. The city of Nineveh was being given a chance by God. Jonah did not. He wanted to preach judgment. So can I say this? Many prophets are preaching judgment only right now. Now, I'm going to tell you where I agree with that and where I disagree with that in just a minute when I reveal the fact to you that is going to open your eyes in a way that you have never seen about this eclipse and is going to confirm to you exactly what God is saying. I agree that there is judgment to a degree. I also agree that there is mercy to a degree, and I'm going to explain to you what that even looks like. So many people are saying prophets are prophesying judgment. I don't want to prophesy repentance. So let me just say to the body of Christ right now, it is wrong if someone is only prophesying judgment. That is not the totality of what God is about to do. Although there is a, a, there is a series of judgment coming that I know to be true by what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. I'm about to show you, but I have to set this up first. I need you to know that true prophetic voices that are hearing from God right now might sense the word of judgment as Jonah did, but also will eventually turn from that message and begin to say God is calling for repentance as Jonah faithfully obeyed the will of God as God forced him to land on Nineveh's shores and to obey the message that God sent him with, and that was to call Nineveh to repentance. So I do believe we are going to see some voices that first said judgment, judgment, judgment over America. Then they're going to turn and they're going to say, no, God is saying it's time for repentance. But let me show you why the ministry of Jonah is actually accurate for right now, that there is a level of both judgment and mercy ahead for America. Now, here's what God showed me. He said, Jennifer, I need you to look up the a time of the eclipse of how long it will be in the sky. And so I researched, and you can do this yourself if you would like to, how long will the April 8th, 24 eclipse be in the sky? How long will it be totality? The totality is four minutes and 28 seconds. Now, God always speaks through confirmation in numbers, and he does nothing without having some form of meaning. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to find why it is four minutes and 28 seconds. And he sent me on a journey to find it. And you are not going to believe, or maybe you will believe, what I'm about to share with you of the importance of this information. I also find it interesting that April 8th, 2024 is the number of the date of the eclipse and the eclipse will be totality for four minutes and 28 seconds. Look at those numbers. Four, April 8th, 2024. You have four, eight, two, two, four. And then the totality of the eclipse will be four, two, eight. So you can see we only have fours, twos, and eights going on. Don't tell me there's not a confirmation in the spirit right there that God chose a date in the time of the totality to be similar in number. But here is what he showed me to go read. I researched the scriptures for chapter four, verse 28 of the word of God. And I was looking, does anything match this, this date, this eclipse? Does anything make sense? What is the correlation here? And here is what I discovered. In Jeremiah four, verse 28, it says, 
For this reason, the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above shall become dark. Because I have spoken, I have decided, and I will not change my mind, nor will I turn back from it. I need you to hang on while I go to the end of this chapter and show you what God says towards the end. The totality of the eclipse is four minutes and 28 seconds. The scripture in Jeremiah 4, 28 talks about the heavens becoming dark. God is obviously confirming what he is saying through this eclipse right now. Because I have spoken, I have decided, and I will not change my mind, nor will I turn back from it. So what has God already decided? Let me remind you that at the beginning of this year, I called a fast along with my dad and my team, and we did 21 days called the Dark Horse Fast. And during that fast, an intercession hit me, and I wept, and I cried, and I believe I shared that video online. And I remember a prophecy coming through my spirit to the depth of shaking in the fear of the Lord like I had not experienced, and I cried out with a loud voice, and I heard the Holy Spirit saying, the winds are coming, the rain is coming. And they would not be stopped. They would not be stopped. I could feel in my spirit that what was coming would not be stopped. No amount of prayer is going to stop it. No amount of repenting is going to stop it. No amount of crying out is going to stop it. I knew that God had already decided to unleash something upon America that his judgment is always for to bring people to repentance, just so you remember. Now, I'm going to bring this into a hopeful word in just a minute, but I need you to hear this first. I could feel when that prophecy came out of the depths of my being, literally the Holy Spirit overtook my body. I was shaking and trembling as I was saying, the winds are coming. The rain is coming. And I knew something in the spirit that God had chosen to decide to do was coming. And I started to cry out because I could feel the seriousness of what that was from the depths of my spirit. And I said, God, please have mercy. I began to beg and plead and cry to the Lord. I said, God, please have mercy. Please have mercy. Please have mercy. Because I could feel he had decided something. Now I find this scripture today and you better believe it's shaking me. Because I already felt that in the spirit in January, and now here I am on this day, finding only less than two weeks away from this eclipse that is going to make an X over over America, passing over seven cities named Nineveh, who was called to tell Nineveh it would be destroyed if they did not repent. Now, I tell you this day, as God is my witness and the Holy Spirit is my witness of what he is saying. That judgment is coming. It has already been decided. And we must repent. We have a window of repentance before judgment. I am telling you that God has already released the command from heaven for judgment to come to this nation. I am telling you right now. But the hope is this. There is still time for repentance. Just like Nineveh had a window to repent. And what did they do? They fasted and they prayed and they cried out. And every person in the city fasted and prayed. They even made their animals fast. There was still a chance for Nineveh to receive mercy from God, even though he had already decided to cast judgment. And I am telling you, it's not that judgment might come. I am telling you, it has already been decided from heaven that judgment is in the future of America right now. It is already in our future. It is already commissioned by heaven. Here is the good news. We do have a window of repentance. And I need you to remember this dream that my my husband had literally right before the new year where he was preaching to youth in the dream. And the Lord said, every time you hear a siren, 
it will be signaling the warning that the youth are to repent and to come home and that they would be the ones who repent and turn to the Lord and bring the fire of preaching and they would bring a message of repentance to this nation. Now, there's many important things I need to share with you, and I need you to stay on because I'm going to give you some simple timeline of what this is about to look like as judgment is coming and the steps we need to take before it comes and that we might perhaps avoid it. But I'm telling you right now, it has already been decided. And the only thing we can try to do is change God's mind. But I tell you in Jeremiah 4, 28, which is the numbers of the totality of the eclipse. This is the most important thing I wanted to share with you. And I'm about to go through some steps and I need you to hold on because this is very important. Literally give me five more minutes of your time. Five more minutes. Five more minutes for, for the hope of a nation. Give me five more. And please share this too. I need to read to you what else Jeremiah 4.28 says. The totality of the eclipse, how long it will be dark in the sky is four minutes and 28 seconds. Jeremiah 4.28 once again says, For this reason the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above shall become dark, because I have spoken, I have decided, and I will not change my mind, nor will I turn back from it. Guys, how could it be that it's a coincidence that the eclipse is four minutes and 28 seconds and that Jeremiah 4, 28 talks about the heavens being dark, the sky being dark, and God will not change his mind, nor will he turn back from what he has said? This is about the destruction of Judah at this time. And you actually need to go and read the entire thing. If you would like... I could read the entire chapter of Jeremiah 4 to us. It is not very long because at the end of that chapter is literally something that I've been prophesying that has to come forth before we can see Gen Z return home and before we can see the next revival. And God has had me prophesying about women giving birth. Remember that, that women are to get back in the birthing room. And what I'm saying is, what is the birthing room? The prayer closet. Women are to get back on their knees in prayer because God is calling women to intercede right now for our nation. Is it a coincidence that there's a million women DC coming on October 12th where a million women are going to meet and cry out and, and ask God to bring healing to this land? I do not think is coincidence. And let me show you why. Look at this in Jeremiah 4. The same chapter that has that verse also has this. Jeremiah 4. I'm going to read the whole, let me read the whole thing to you. All right, because you really need to hear this. So please don't zone out. Listen to this. The whole chapter is a message. Let me start at verse 19. This is the lament over Judah's devastation. My soul, my soul, I wreathe in anguish and pain. Oh, the walls of my heart. My heart is pounding and throbbing within me. I cannot be silent, for you have heard, O oh my soul, the sound of a trumpet, the alarm of war. News of one terrible disaster comes close after another, for the whole land is devastated. Suddenly my tents are spoiled and destroyed. My tent curtains ruined in a moment. How long, O oh Lord, must I see the banner and hear the sound of the trumpet. For my people are stupid and foolish, says the Lord to Jeremiah. They do not know me. They are foolish children and have no understanding. They are shrewd enough to do evil, but they do not know how to do good. I looked at the earth in my vision, and behold, it was as at the time of creation, formless and void and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked at the mountains, and behold, they were trembling, and all the hills moved back and forth. I looked, and behold, there was no man, and all the birds of the air had fled. Okay, I need to pause right here because you want to know how prophetic this is? I just had birds being removed from my house, literally right over my studio right here, minutes before I went live, 
the birds were being removed because they had gotten and nested up into the the air duct, the dryer vent, because this is a new home and we had not yet covered it. And just today they'd been removed. We'd scheduled that a while back and they said, we can come today. Well, they end up coming and removing the birds that had nested above my office right here where I'm going to prophesy this word. Literally 10 minutes before I went live, they finished. All the birds of the air had fled. The birds are being removed. Don't tell me that that is not a prophetic sign, even in the midst of the seriousness of this word, that the birds, the snare of the fowler, the things of the air, the lies of the air, where the enemy has been in the air. Every bird, every fowler is being removed. I believe that to be true. I think God is still going to give us the power of the Holy Spirit in this window to see something happen, even in the midst of impending judgment because judgment was impending upon Nineveh, yet God still sent Jonah with a message of repentance. So listen to the rest of this. I looked and behold, the fertile land was a wilderness. Let's look at America. It was fertile. It was the land of the free and the home of the brave. And now we look and it looks as though it is a wilderness. And then Jeremiah continues, and all its cities were pulled down before the presence of the Lord, before his fierce anger. Therefore, says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not cause total destruction. Then it goes to verse 428. For this reason, the earth shall mourn. What is that? Intercession. Repentance. And the heavens above shall become dark, the eclipse. Because I have spoken, I have decided, and I will not change my mind, nor will I turn back from it. I need you to keep listening as I read the rest of Jeremiah. Every city runs away at the sound of the horsemen and archers. They go into the thickets and climb among the rocks. Every city is deserted and no man lives in them. And you, O desolate one, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself in scarlet, though you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with paint, you make yourself beautiful in vain. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. Verse 31, listen to this. Proverbs 31, verse 31, Jeremiah 4. For I heard a cry like a woman in labor. The anguish as of one giving birth to her first child. The cry of the daughter of Zion who gasps for breath. Who stretches out her hands saying, woe is me, my judgment comes. I faint in fear before the murderers. This is the end of the prophecy in Jeremiah 4. Who remembers that the Holy Spirit told me that women would be moved on by the Holy Spirit to cry out in intercession this year, and I prophesied it and released some of that in my book, but actually the, the, the word about intercession, so I don't want to do a book plug, okay? So I'm not trying to do that, but awakening the redeemed Eve is a prophecy. It's not, I'm not trying to do a book plug. I need you to understand the, the prophetic implication of this word. Women are going to step on the snakes. Women are to cry aloud. Women on the onset, on the after the the onset and the offset of this eclipse happening, there is a call right now to women to be moved on by the Holy Spirit to birth what He wants to bring, what must come if we are to avoid the imminent judgment that has already been decided from heaven. And I tell you now. 
the women of God are going to be moved on in intercession to cry out. We're going to cry out on behalf of the Holy Spirit that even though judgment is coming to America, may there be space for repentance. And the women are going to carry such a groan and a moan and an urgency in the spirit. We are going to pray in our prayer language in ways like we have never known. The gatherings are going to change. The church meetings need to change. They need to turn into prayer meetings. I'm telling you right now, Nineveh stopped everything when they knew. Jonah said to them, you will be destroyed if you do not repent. And they took it serious. And I tell you now, we have to take this serious. Nobody wants to hear, well, judgment is coming. But the fact remains that God does it. And judgment is him bringing light to where repentance needs to happen so that he doesn't have to destroy. He said, I will not bring total destruction. So I don't know what the judgment is going to look like on the other side of this, but I do know this much. Before I even discovered this in Jeremiah 4, 28, being the number of the totality of the eclipse, which will be four minutes and 28 seconds. And in Jeremiah 4, 28, it talks about the heavens going dark and that God has already decided and he will not change his mind. There is no way that is not a confirmation of what God is saying. So in the midst of this, God is calling the women to pray. And I remember what I sensed weeks ago. And I said, we have three to four months. And I don't know why I was saying that. This was before I even thought the eclipse was a sign of judgment or not. I always want to believe mercy, guys. I will always say, God is merciful. God wants to forgive. All we have to do is pray. You know, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. We know what the word of God says, and I believe that to be true. And I believe we have that window, just like Nineveh had that window when Jonah came and said, guys, you have to repent. Judgment is coming if you do not. They took it serious, and the entire town fasted, including the animals. So my, my challenge to you, America, is are you taking this serious now where you did not before? Because you need to wake up. You need to take this serious. God has decided. And the only way that we're going to see a change is if we actually show that we're going to humble ourselves. So the next three to four months, I remember saying, women, we have three to four months. So what is that? We're at the end of March, April, May, June, July. That's through July. So into August, I feel a season. I feel like a trimester. Like we've already been pregnant. God has been trying to birth this revival through us. It is here. You guys know if you followed me that my words are on a timeline with the Holy Spirit. I cannot preach or prophesy outside of the timeline of where we are in the Spirit and what is coming. And he always shows me what is coming. He always does. Within a year or two before, he shows me what is coming and I write it down. And that's what my books are about. So I tell you the steps are this. Women, we have got to intercede and pray and ask God to open our eyes for the need of repentance and to take this serious, the way Esther took it serious, the way she called Israel to take it serious, Mordecai took it serious, Nineveh took it serious. Guys, we have to take it serious. And I'm talking about personally and collectively. Is there any sin in your life? Because if there is, now is the time to get it out because the purification is here. The fire of the Holy Spirit is here. He's purifying us personally. He's purifying our families, he's purifying the church, and he's purifying America specifically. And here's what, here's what I didn't finish telling you about my husband's dream, and then I need to finish up, and I'm going to close in prayer. My husband's dream, in the dream, the Lord said that he was giving America one more chance to repent. This was a dream at the end of December of 2023. Before 2024, God gave my husband a prophetic dream, which ended up coming to pass and has been confirmed multiple times. Because in that dream, the Lord said, every time that the sirens are sounded, it is connected to the youth awakening and the youth revival. And if we do not repent as a nation, it will be over. And in the dream, the Lord told 
Monday, he heard him say, I am giving America one more chance. And if they do not, it will fall. It will be given over to its enemies. And don't tell me the Lord doesn't speak like that because you can look all throughout the Old Testament and see the Lord. You can see the Lord saying, two nations that he would give them over to their enemies. How many times did he give his own people, Israel, over to their enemies because of their unwillingness, their stubborn neckness, their disobedience to him? How many times? So we cannot say because we are the people of God, this is not going to come upon us. We are wrong and we err because the character of God is chastisement and judgment for his children so that they might be saved. And I tell you, I hope the world is paying attention because God is speaking loud and clear right now. He has decided and he will not relent. There is no changing his mind. According to what he is saying right now, there is no changing his mind. But that doesn't mean that we give up, we quit, we don't pray, we don't humble ourselves. Because peradventure, he will see our humility. He will see that we've turned from our wicked ways. Perhaps, according to 2 Chronicles 7.14, he will hear from heaven and heal our land. And according to that dream, he told my husband, I'm giving America one final chance. So guys... We do have a chance, but this is it. And if we don't satisfy what God is looking for when he says, repent and turn to me with all of your heart, if we do not satisfy that, judgment has already been decided. So this is serious because it is, and I am not going to make light of it. God said alarms were going to go out off everywhere. And do you know the New Year's Day alarm sounded and there was a big youth thing happen where there was a youth like fight and police were sent to break up all of these youth in a mall. Many of you probably remember that happening. There was like 120 cop cars that responded to this youth outbreak thing and sirens were going off everywhere because the police car sirens were on on New Year's Day. And not just that, in my husband's dream, he was speaking to youth in a school, in a gymnasium. That has to do with age range of it's our teenagers, but it also has to do with that's a place of education. That's a place of schooling. And God is putting us in the school of the spirit. Now, since then, we have gotten multiple emails and comments on our post of people saying that in their child's school, alarms are going off all the time. Sirens are going off all the time. It is literally on a consistent basis. And guess where they're going off? In the gymnasiums. God is confirming the word. And what did he say? I'm giving America one final chance to repent. And then it will be turned over to its enemies. That is the word of the Lord. That is what he is saying. You cannot change it and stop trying to manipulate this judgment all the prophets and the speakers out there and say, it's going to be okay and this isn't judgment and this is mercy and everything's fine because you're actually misleading the people. What you need to be saying is, no, this is actually a warning for America and it is judgment and judgment is on the way and we all need to humble ourselves right now and repent and let the fear of God come back on us because the fear of the Lord is returning to the church and I tell you now, the Holy Spirit is going to call upon a yielded, humble company right now of women all across America to pray and intercede and ask God for mercy and ask God, you know what we need to be praying? That people will repent of their sin for the conviction of the Holy Spirit to come upon America and that people will repent of their sin and that the fear of God would come. And women, I want you to agree with me in prayer that this will be our prayer, that America would repent and turn of their sin because judgment is coming and that they would feel the fear of the Lord enough to humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. God is starting with us. And I do believe we have turned. 
I, I, you can look at the majority of the body of Christ, the ones that really know him, and you can see over the past few years, especially since 2020, that there has been a turning of the church. The church has awakened. It is awake. It has woken up. Judgment did start at the house of God, you guys. I believe that he has already been purifying his house. I think he's gotten his house to a place right here so we would be ready and serious and take up our armor and our swords and be ready to fight in the spirit because the, this day is at hand. See, he prepared us for the day of battle. So I do believe that we are a company of people. We're awake and we are strong in the spirit and we know how to deal with the enemy. And I tell you right now that God did that for a reason because there is hope. There is hope. But we cannot sit here and say there's not going to be any judgment. That is incorrect to say. And so I'm here to bring clarification of what the Father is actually saying from heaven. Judgment is on the way, but intercession has been unleashed by the Holy Spirit that we might avoid that judgment. So women, we are called to the front lines. Let's do this. Men, you are called to protect and shield this place in the spirit. You are called to be strength. You are called to be shields in the spirit and to cover the women right now because the women are actually going to feel very vulnerable and very raw while the Holy Spirit um, is birthing this moaning and groaning upon the women so that the sounds are released so that intercession, the seeds have got to go into the earth so that the harvest can come. And I'm telling you that women, this is your assignment right now from heaven. It has nothing to do with women being better or men being better or anybody being more spiritual or what. None of that matters. It's an assignment from heaven. God said, women line up, women birth my move. And look at that in Jeremiah 4, the cry of the daughter of Zion. We are going to cry because we're going to see, okay, we know judgment is on the way. And we're going to cry out from a different place now, knowing if you know judgment is on the way, that changes the way you pray. That changes the way you pray. So women, we've got to do this. Men, you have got to shield the women in the spirit right now. I implore you men of God to cover the women in prayer. Back the enemy off of us. Command the enemy to leave us alone while we're in the birthing room because we're going to be under the intercession of the Holy Spirit. We don't have time to go out there and be worn out trying to deal with a bunch of stuff. We've got to focus on the birth of this baby. So I'm asking the men right now, will you line up on the front line and will you be the shield in front of us? Will you be the one that has your arm in front of us and you've got your shield? And then we're behind the shield and we're praying and we're releasing the arrows of heaven. This is the way we're going to work together and see this happen. And when this happens, I tell you right now, Gen Z is going to wake up and they're going to join the army ranks. And they're going to be part of the ones preaching repentance. And they're going to go out and they're going to get the harvest. But I tell you that mothers and fathers are going to lead by example. And I'm telling you three to four month window of us to step into this. And I'm praying about what is my assignment, God, to create space for this intercession. Because this has got to happen. That everything needs to stop and intercession needs to be the only thing that we are releasing right now. I know I have my book and I've got my book club, but I'll tell you what we're doing. We're praying and we're interceding. We are praying and we are interceding. And God is waking up a company of women to do this. And that is my assignment. And that is why I have that book club because I am preaching to women to get them into position because I'm telling you we are at war. This is where we are. We have got to do this. We are in the onslaught of it right now. And time is short and the window is closing. And here we are. So we're going to take this serious and we're going to step into this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Friends, Yes, that's right. When Zion travails, she brings forth her children. And we need to grab onto the promises of God. We need to be getting scripture about this, y'all. We need to do this and we need to get in there with the Holy Spirit. And we need to let him lead us in prayer because we've got to let the Holy Ghost be in charge. We've got to let him be the one who leads us and guides us into all truth. So Holy Spirit led prayer happening upon the women and the men. And we're going to see a great harvest and the youth are coming in and the sirens are sounding. Oh my goodness, the sirens and the dream of the siren. And in this chapter, you guys, is the sounding of the alarm. Oh my goodness. I just connected that. Jeremiah 4, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. 
It's the sounding of the alarm of war. So when God gave that dream to my husband about the sirens, it's the sounding of the alarm. And there it is in Jeremiah 4, the chapter God connected with the eclipse that is coming in less than two weeks. Guys, the, it, we are here. That We don't need more confirmation, but God will give us more confirmation. If you have to have more, I'm sure he would, but I don't know why we need more than this. I need you tagging all your friends and I need you sharing this on your news feeds and I need you sharing this to your story and I need you sharing this on everything. I need you copying the link and sharing it to your family members so that they can have clarity of this is how we proceed. There is no other way to proceed. This is it. This is clearly the word of the Lord. We are to pray. We are to ask God, may repentance come to the hearts of America. May repentance come. May they be convicted of their sin and may they turn. And we need to pray and pray and pray. Because I tell you what's going to happen when we do that. It's going to push past the, it's going to push the darkness away from those that have been, they have been captured by the darkness. They are imprisoned by the darkness. They are literally um, deceived by the darkness. And when we pray, we're going to push that darkness back from their minds and they're going to be able to hear clearly and see clearly and feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit to turn so that America does not have to be turned over to her enemies. This is the position we need to take right now. This is serious. We are at battle. We are at war. And this is not just a war that we think it is. This is a spiritual war. This is not just a flesh and blood war. This is a spiritual war. Please do not get distracted by all the other stuff happening out there that can get all of your attention. Because I'm going to tell you, if you will line up in the spirit with this, those things will hash out. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So put your blinders on. It's time to run, guys. It's time to get back in the birthing room. And I don't know what that looks like, but you need to get together with women. You need to get together in your prayer groups. You need to get together in your churches. You need to talk to your leaders. You need to share this video with, with your pastors, okay? Because this is serious. It's not just another video. And it's not just another prophetic word. This is serious, all right? Now, if we join together and do this, and I'm gonna obey the Holy Spirit and how he shows me to make space for that, Praying together online, it's going to look like something because this is fresh on me just today, what I discovered. And I said, Lord, this is more serious than I really understood. And now I'm like, yes, sir, here we go. So I need you to share this. I need you to tag everyone and get into their news feeds and let's pray right now. Okay. And then let's, let's, let's be serious. Seek him in your home. Seek him in your prayer closet. Seek him at your churches. Seek him with your family. Let your family members know, like everybody needs to be told. It's right now, we are the voice of Jonah to America, okay? This is it. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just want to obey you, Lord, and do whatever we need to do, Holy Spirit, that you want us to do so we can be in line with your, your timeline of what this looks like. We know you are calling us to repentance, and we know you are calling us to intercession, I know that you're anointing your women right now to carry these seeds of revival and birth right now, your children. You want your children to come home. You want your prodigals to come home. And Lord, you have unleashed a sound in your women in this season, this year, and especially over the next few months to birth a revival and birth of a, ha a harvest. I believe that, Lord. I believe right now you're calling us to the front line to push back the darkness so that your children can see clearly and repent of their sin and come back to you. Lord, sound the alarm in our spirit. Let this bear witness with us that we know you're saying this. We know you are speaking this. And Lord, that we will say, yes, sir, I will sign up for duty, whatever it is you need me to do, that I would give an hour or two hours every night to just bow my knee and pray. And Holy Spirit, however you want to pray through me, come and pray through me. And Lord, teach me how to pray in my prayer language and teach me how to just partner with you and feel the groaning and the moaning of the Holy Spirit so that your will will be done and your kingdom come on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we need a spirit of prayer. And I'm asking that on behalf of your nation, Lord, of women all across America that love you, that you would call them to prayer. Lord, I am asking right now for the moaning and the groaning of the spirit to come upon your women as you are desiring it to, and that we would fully yield to you, Holy Spirit, that we would fully yield to you so that you can birth through us what you want to birth through us. It is time to bear down in the spirit, women of God. And let the kingdom of God come forth in Jesus' name. So, Lord, let your fire come. Let your intercession come. 
Let your spirit of prayer come. And Lord, anything we need, let it come. And Lord, I pray for the men right now that you would strengthen them in the season, God, to be able to be the shield and the protectors that you want them to be, Lord, that they would guard the women right now in the spirit and that they would push back the darkness because shields are to block the arrows of the enemy. So God, I thank you right now that the men of God are going to stand up and they are going to shield in the spirit and they're going to block the arrows of the enemy in Jesus' name from touching your women while they are in inner session birthing this thing that you have, God. I thank you for that right now. And I pray, Father, for strength for them, that they would be able to stand. And Lord, I pray for the youth right now that they will wake up with us and that they will sound the alarm in the spirit and call forth repentance to their generation. God, I pray for the Gen Z preachers, the Gen Z evangelists, the Gen Z revivalists, Lord, to stand up, wake up, carry the fire and the message of repentance like the John the Baptist, God, that they will be the sounding the alarm, that their voice is the alarm. Let their voice come forward as the alarm, God, and release to their generation, God, and wake up up their generation in Jesus' name. God, I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray for them. I speak blessing. I thank you, God, you are joining the generations and you are showing us how to work together in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, Father. I thank you right now for the anointing that all of this would would happen according to your will, Lord, according to your timeline. Lord, come Holy Spirit, let it be your will done and not ours in Jesus' name. We say, yes, help us obey you. Help us love you and help us love our neighbor, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, judge the devil. Let your judgment be upon the devil's head. Let your fire come and judge every fiery serpent, every demonic serpent, God, that has been let loose in America. We are asking you to judge the snakes that have been loose in America's garden. And Lord, bind up those snakes and let them be judged and thrown into the fire in Jesus' name. God, let not one of your children be lost to the deceiving lies of the whisper of the snakes that have been in the air. And just like you clean the birds out of my home today, right before I went live, I ask right now, because birds in the attic, birds in the mind, uh, the, the, the lies in the mind, and that's where the enemy whispers in, Lord, you are removing the fowler, the birds that have been lofty in the mind of America. And Lord, I'm asking you to judge that and remove it now from the minds so that we are not deceived by every little crafty thing that the serpents try to say, but that we would be wise, Lord, that we would know these are lies, that we will stand against that and be delivered in the name of Jesus. God, there has been such deception rampant across America that has taken out your men and your women and your youth. And I'm asking you, Father, to judge every snake that has lied to the minds of your people and the minds of those that don't even know you yet. And God, God, bind up those snakes and cast them out in this season so that there is a free space to repent under the glory and the covering of your wings. And I thank you, God, for that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your mercy come. Let your grace come in Jesus' name. Amen. I know that we're going to pray so much more and I could pray all day long, but I want you guys to continue in prayer. I think the assignment is clear. If you have any questions, please comment. If you need to be in touch with us, just go to contagiouslove.org. You can email us there. You can sign up for email updates there, and you can be involved with whatever we're doing. Whatever assignments God gives me to unleash will be sent out by email there. So contagiouslove.org. If you guys want to give today, I'm just going to give an opportunity. Please, there's no pressure ever, and you know that. But if you want to give today, just go to contagiouslove.org and click on give. um, Or you can comment give and I will send you the link. We would love people to partner with us as we move forward. It's very important because there is a lot God has that he's actually showing me that I am to do for him. And it is a lot of work and effort and things that need to be done. And I would love your partnership, guys. I really would. And if you're interested in that, please just comment partner or you can go to contagiouslove.org and click on partner. I believe the links are attached. If it's not, um, somebody can comment contagiouslove.org. Really simple. Just go there. You can find everything you need. Okay. Please share this. Please, please share this. I see that many of you have, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I know that you know that this is from God, that I do not have to ask you to share. I know that you are 
because it's obvious of what he is doing. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for, for listening today. Thank you for opening your heart. Thank you for being in agreement. I am reading your comments and I will go back and read them as well. And I appreciate you being in prayer and taking this serious with me. And I will continue going live. I'm going live Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I'm going to continue going live uh, for right now. That might change to maybe twice a week in the future. I don't know because I am going to start up um, traveling again. So sometimes I'm not going to be able to go live, especially on Fridays. We have the school in Minnesota April 4th through the 6th. So I will not be going live on that Friday specifically. Um, we do have about 30 seats at that school if anybody's interested in coming. Once again, contagiouslove.org. Click on events. Free st they're all free. Free revival nights, free schools. I feel the glory so strong. I'm getting, I'm getting a little distracted by the, by the presence of the Lord. Oh, he's right here, guys. He loves us and he loves America and he, lo he, he desires mercy, not judgment. Please understand that about his heart. But sometimes he has to choose according to his word. And he has decided and he has chosen. But he does desire mercy. And I do have hope. But I know that we have a big part to play to see that come. So let's do this, guys. We're going to see, I believe, the greatest revival that America has ever known. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And at that, there's 222 reactions, which is the number connected to the youth revival. So I will take that as a yes and amen from the Holy Ghost today. <laughs> amen. Okay. I love you guys. So I'll see you. Um, let's see. I'll see you Friday. I'll be live with Ray Oxley, who is part of the worship team that travels with me, Arrow Ministries. And we're going to be talking about righteous women giving birth, which is still part of my book. So we're talking about chapter nine. So today I basically went on chapter eight, even though I wasn't really talking about my book today. Today was about chapter eight is yielding to the Holy Spirit. So this live stream actually fits that really well because we're talking about yielding to the Holy Spirit in prayer. So on Friday, I'll be talking about chapter nine. So we'll still be praying through this, guys. So we're going to take this word into that interview with Ray. And me and her will be discussing righteous women giving birth. What does that look like to be a righteous woman in the spirit, giving birth, spiritual birth? And we're going to be doing that and praying. So we're going to, we're doing this. We're going to be seeking the Lord. We're not going to relent. We're not giving up. God's not relenting. We're not relenting. Let's do this. Okay. And we're going to see a mighty harvest in Jesus name. All right. I love you guys. And I'll see you Friday. It's going to be around probably um, afternoon or evening, uh, depending on her schedule. So I don't have an exact time. But if you just follow on the socials, you'll get a notification. All right. Okay. Amen. I feel so much better that I got to share that because it is so important. It was like weighing on me so heavy. And I said, oh my goodness, we have to know this. We have to know this. We have to know this. So if you just jumped on, go back and listen from the beginning. I give you all the information you need in the first 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. I love you guys. God bless you. And I'll see you on Friday. Contagiouslove.org for more info. And remember, it's time to awaken the heart. It's time to awaken the church. And it's time to awaken the women now. It's time to awaken the redeemed Eve. All right. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.